गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट आई डॉक्टर कैलाश सानप फ्रॉम एन बी मेहता साइंस कॉलेज बोर्डी वेलकम यू ऑल इन माई सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू डाइस्ट ऑफ इंडस्ट्री सीन फर्स्ट वीडियो वी हैव सीन वॉट आर डाइज रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ डाइस्ट ऑफ और डाइज एंड देयर फास्टनेस प्रॉपर्टीज हियर वी विल सी सम इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी अबाउट दिस डाइस्ट ऑफ इंडस्ट्री Let's see natural dyes. What are natural dyes? What are natural dyes? What do you think? Natural dyes are the dyes which are derived from plants, invertebrate, rock and minerals. So these are what natural dyes. Natural dyes are the dyes which are derived from plants, invertebrates. rock and minerals now what are the main parts of plant what are the main parts of plant from which we can get a dye see roots leaves bark again we can say wood flowers so these are what the main parts of plant from which we can get a natural plant based dye now what are the parts of invertebrates from which we can get a dye so that parts may be a any part of body from which we can get a invertebrate base that is mammal uh, sorry animal based dye now what are the parts of rock and minerals rock and minerals we have to crush some part of that rock and minerals to get some particular dye other than these three dyes that is plant based dyes invertebrate based dyes and rock and mineral based dyes okay there is again a fungi or a lichen based dyes also but they are not that much important these three are main important natural dyes hence we will study the natural dyes based on plant invertebrate and rock and minerals okay let's see now what are the types of natural dyes that three types are the main general types okay from which these dyes are we will get so which are these dyes see indigo tyrian purple madder cochineal curcumin logwood henna saffron chlorophyll so these are the what main nine dyes that we have to discuss in this video okay so let's see indigo dye what is indigo see indigo has been used in textile industry for last several thousand years so we can discuss these points based on indigo dye so discovery of indi uh, discovery of indigo dye india has got its credit for discovery of indigo dye now indigo fairy tinctoria indigo indigo fairy tinctoria it's a plant that is a botanical name of indigo base dye okay so this plant see this plant is having this green leaves okay so these green leaves are taken and from that a yellow juice is extracted these green leaves are taken and yellow juice is extracted from that plant and that yellow juice on oxidation that yellow juice on oxidation in presence of air it will get converted into blue color so that blue color is nothing but this indigo dye okay so this is what the plant indigo fairy tinctoria from which this indigo dye is obtained now seen ancient times india japan southern asia uh, these nation southern asian nation and followed by greek and italy they have used this in this indigo dye in vast amount now the main source of indigo dye that is main supplier of indigo dye 
is india in nowadays also india is the main supplier of indigo dye in world what is the use of indigo dye indigo dye is used for clothing wool silk again cotton type of material okay see blue jeans we know blue jeans the blue jeans is particularly uh, dyed from this indigo dye so indigo dye is used for giving denim blue color to the jeans now see this is what the structure of indigo dye a benzene ring is attached to a five membered uh, heterocyclic ring and that heterocyclic ring is attached to a another heterocyclic ring five membered heterocyclic ring through a double bond and that second heterocyclic ring is again attached to a benzene ring again so this is what the structure of indigo dye see here in this structure of indigo this nh this carbonyl and this carbon carbon double bond and carbon carbon double bond sorry uh, carbon carbon double bond and carbonyl are what chromophoric system and while nh is what oxochromic system hence there is a conjugation between chromophore and oxochromic system and because of that that indigo dye is having a bright color next we will see tyrian purple tyrian purple is another natural dye important natural dye see this dye tyrian purple dye is so much costlier because it is obtained from two kinds of sail fish it is obtained from or it is derived from two kinds of sail fish one first sail fish is known as purpura homiastroma and second is what murex brandis second is what murex brandis see from the first fish that is purpura homiastroma the dye which is obtained which is having deep blue purple color while the dye which is obtained from murex bandaris which is having slightly redder shade of purple color so this dye is having two different type of shade tyrian purple dye is having two different types of shade third now we can say this is what the derivative of indigo dye see the structure it's basically a what core structure is indigo dye it just substituted by two bromine atoms on two benzene rings okay this benzene ring here also and this benzene ring here also having two bromine atoms so this is nothing but what 6 6 six, 6 dibromo indigo 6 6 dibromo indigo which is called this the main constituent of this tyrian purple dye is what 6 6 dibromo indigo now you can see here this is what the sail fish is uh, shown here the person is showing this person is showing on his hand he is pouring that contents of that sail on his hand so it is getting what purple color again here i have shown some sail fishes okay first is what brandaris second one is what purpura homiastroma these are the what some sail fish are given and these are what the clothes are given and these clothes are having such type of shade of color that means the dye obtained from this sail fish is having this type of color the dye is obtained from this sail fish is having this type of color and the dye is obtained from this sail fish is having this type of color of cloth this is what tyrian purple see one more thing about this tyrian purple as it is too much costlier at that time only rich people only rich people are used to uh, wear this purple color clothes and they are called royal purple they are also called royal that means this dye is also called royal purple dye at that time next next type of dye is a madder dye next type of natural dye is what a madder dye it is obtained from roots of roots of madder plant it is obtained from roots of madder plant 
see these are what the roots are shown here see these roots are already in reddish uh, brown in color orange brown in color this is what the madder plant i have shown here and these are what the threads that died by this madder plant roots that means the juice derived from madder plant root now roots contains see madder plant root contains a glycoside which is called rubrinthic acid madder plant root contains a glycoside which is called rubrinthic acid it's also uh, contains some another part also now this glycoside that is rubrinthic acid on hydrolysis gives sugar alizarin and purpurin this rubrinthic acid on hydrolysis gives sugar alizarin and purpurin so these are the two main core that is alizarin and purpurin so these are what alizarin and purpurin are the main constituents of this color that is the color we are getting from these roots so main constituents are what alizarin and purpurin alizarin is also called turkey red alizarin is also called what turkey red because it gives a somewhat reddish color at the time of dyeing a fabric now see alizarin is nothing but a modern dye alizarin is nothing but a modern dye modern dye means what when we have to dye a particular fabric at that time we have to use some uh, we have to use some auxiliary chemical we have to use some auxiliary chemical like a metal okay so with the help of that auxiliary auxiliary chemical or a metal we can dye that uh, particular fabric so it is called nothing but that auxiliary chemical or a material is called nothing but the modern so alizarin is nothing but a modern dye so see this alizarin gives red color when we have when aluminum material is used at the time of dyeing it gives pink color when tin material is used at the time of dyeing it gives brown color of shade when chromium material is used at the time of dyeing and it gives yellowish brown shade when copper metal is used at the time of dyeing so this is what the madder dyes okay see here i have shown the structure of alizarin and purpurin alizarin is nothing but 1 to dihydroxy anthraquinone alizarin is nothing but 1 to dihydroxy anthraquinone while what is purpurin purpurin is nothing but 1 to 4 trihydroxy anthraquinone next natural dye is cochineal which is obtained from powder bodies of female insect coccus cacti coccus cacti okay coccus is nothing but the name of insect and cacti is nothing but what the plant on which this coccus uh, insect is living so cacti is nothing but what a host host plant on which this coccus insect is living so these insects coccus cacti insect generally found that means uh, they are found in mostly they are found in central america south america mexico and in west indies so which is the main constituent which is the main chemical constituent of this cochineal dye main chemical constituent of cochineal dye is carminic acid main chemical constituent of cochineal dye is nothing but a what carminic acid and carminic acid is water soluble and which is nothing but a derivative of derivative of anthraquinone carminic acid is nothing but a derivative of anthraquinone see this carminic acid forms insoluble aluminum and calcium salts this carminic acid can form insoluble aluminum and calcium salts they are gives uh, red and purple dyes they gives what red and purple dyes and these dyes are called caramine these dyes are called caramine now see carminic acid uh, is derivative of anthraquinone this what we have seen it is used for dyeing of wool and silk this carminic acid or cochineal dye is used for dyeing of wool and silk today caramine is primarily used for uh, used as a colorant in food and in lipstick that means what caramine is non toxic caramine dye 
cochineal dye is a non toxic dye which is used in cosmetic mostly in cosmetic and as a food color because it's non toxic in nature see in lipstick also it is used in in eyeliners okay lipstick and in eyeliners this caramine dye is used in most in or in vast amount now uh, this uh, how this caramine dye is isolated from cochineal insect that is coccus cacti insect see what powder bodies of this female insect is taken powder bodies of this female insect is taken and it is boiled okay it is boiled in water and in that ammonia or sodium carbonate so ammonia or sodium carbonate solution is <coughs> added in that ammonia or sodium carbonate solution is uh, is added and after that sometimes this solution is filtered okay this solution is filtered filter and in filtrate alum is added in filtrate alum is added now that carminic acid forms aluminum salt carminic acid form ppt of aluminum salt and that ppt of aluminum salt is nothing but a dye and which is used as a dye for various purposes okay so this is what nothing but a cochineal dye here i have shown you this what female insect coccus and this is what a its host bearing plant cacti okay this is what a uh, cochineal dye now let us see next dye see next dye is what curcumin next dye is what curcumin curcumin or a turmeric you know curcumin is also called turmeric haldi okay we know what are the main uses of this curcumin dye see active color compound in curcumin is uh, active color compound in this is what curcumin hence this dye is called curcumin it is extracted from the roots of curcuma longa it is extracted from the roots of curcuma longa which is orange yellow color so, uh, orange yellow color uh, solid okay curcuma longa now this turmeric paper we know the use of turmeric paper you are using turmeric paper in laboratory for the test of what for the test of ammonia okay it is also that is turmeric paper is used as a indicator turmeric that this turmeric shows yellow color in acidic medium and red color in alkaline medium hence turmeric is also used as indicator it is used in detection of boron this turmeric is used in detection of boron it is also used as a food color we know it okay as in kitchen we are using this turmeric in making various sabjis okay now curcumin is also have good antiseptic properties curcumin is also having good antiseptic properties suppose if we are having some wound at that wound we are using this curcumin okay to fill that wound this is what nothing but what a curcumin now next dye is logwood next natural dye is what logwood see here i have shown this is the what the tree plant okay small plant of logwood and this is what a logwood okay this is also a logwood see it's showing a red blood color juice it is also showing red red blur color juice see active color compound in logwood is what hematin active color compound or active color constituent of logwood is what hematin okay hematin don't confuse with hematin okay which is a what iron protein iron porphyrin protein don't confuse with hematin now it is extracted from compiaki wood this logwood is extracted from compiaki wood its logwood is nothing but a dye which is extracted from what compiaki wood it's a natural modern dye it's natural modern dye logwood contains glucoside logwood contains a glucoside which on hydrolysis gives glucose and hematoxylene which on hydrolysis gives glucose and hematoxylene see here i have shown this hematoxylene okay hematoxylene now this hematoxylene on oxidation gives hematin this hematoxylene on oxidation gives what hematin 
so hematin is the main constituent of this dye now last point i can i would like to say this is the only dye this is the only dye which is still produced on commercial scale commercial scale means what on a larger scale commercial scale means what on a larger scale from natural sources this is the only dye which is still produced on commercial scale from natural sources now let's see next dye next dye is henna next dye is what henna we know mostly girls are know this henna dye okay because they are using this henna in mehndi work i have also shown this mehndi work here for girls and boys now see this is what a fruits of henna dye uh, sorry fruits of henna tree and these are what the leaves of henna tree okay so this is a henna tree now see which is the active constituent of henna active constituent of henna is what lotion active color compound is what lotion lotion is nothing but what 2 hydroxy naphtha quinone lotion is nothing but what 2 hydroxy chemical name of lotion is what 2 hydroxy naphtha quinone so this henna is extracted from powder leaves of powder leaves of henna tree it is extracted from powder leaves of henna tree it has properties of acid dye henna when compounded vena when compounded or when it complex with what pyrogallol and copper salt it can be used as a hair dye henna can be used as hair dye when we are forming a complex of henna with what pyrogallol or a copper salt it can be used as hair dye so this is what about henna now let's see next dye i think it's maybe a saffron okay S saffron you know saffron saffron is nothing but what a kesar kesar okay saffron contains 28 volatile and aroma yielding compounds <coughs> saffron contains 28 volatiles and aroma yielding compounds dominated by ketones and aldehydes mostly there are what ketones and aldehydes in saffron there are mostly ketones and aldehydes okay so we know it's 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 a very expensive dye it's a very expensive dye it is yellow spice obtained from plant crocus sativus okay it is a yellow spice obtained from a plant crocus sativus see this is what the flowers of this crocus sativus plant and these are what yellow spice Okay, these are what see these stigmas are called yellow spice. Three three yellow spice are we can see here. Each flower is ha having just three spice, and from these three spices, uh, three spice we will get this saffron dye. Dried stigmas that is this brown stigma, sorry orange stigmas. A dried stigmas of crocus flower which may be yellow, which may be yellow. purple or white in color that are nothing but what our kesars that are nothing but what our kesar or a saffron dried stigmas of crocus flower see this dye is non toxic dye we know this dye turmeric and this saffron is what non toxic dye it is used as a food color and as a flowering agent this is used as food color and flowering agent see i have shown this flower crocus sativus okay from this crocus sativus this is obtain what this stigmas are obtain and these are what ha hmm. uh, plastic culture uh, that is uh, plastic culture okay in home this crocus plant is grown okay by a farmer so see this dye is so expensive dye because it is completely dependent on nature in india this dye is grown or this dye is cultivated in what uh, where uh, in kashmir okay because kashmir is having such type of good atmosphere for giving good beauty to this saffron okay see i have also written here why saffron is so expensive watch this video okay you can watch this video later i will when i will share my ppt with you then you can watch this video
नेक्स्ट लास्ट नेचुरल डाई इज क्लोरोफिल लास्ट नेचुरल डाई इज वॉट क्लोरोफिल क्लोरोफिल इज ए ग्रीन फोटोसिंथेटिक पिगमेंट वी नो क्लोरोफिल इज ए ग्रीन फोटोसिंथेटिक पिगमेंट फाउंड इन ल्यूज ऑफ ल्यूज एंड बार्क ऑफ प्लांट क्लोरोफिल इज ए ग्रीन फोटोसिंथेटिक पिगमेंट फाउंड इन ल्यूज एंड बार्क ऑफ प्लांट इट इज नथिंग बट वॉट मैग्नेशियम कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑफ पॉरफायरिंग क्लोरोफिल इज नथिंग बट ए वॉट मैग्नेशियम कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑफ ए पॉरफायरिंग रिंग पॉरफायरिंग रिंग इज ए नथिंग बट ए वॉट ए हेट्रोसाइक्लिक रिंग पायरॉल ओके पायरॉल रिंग सो सो दिस मेनी बिल्ड एक्सकेज लाइक ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर इज कॉल्ड ए पॉरफायरिंग it is used this uh, chlorophyll is used in dyeing of cotton and block printing of handloom block printing means what jo block hota hai shikka hota hai usse hum kya karte hai usko print karte hai so this is what block printing of handlooms very dull it's having very dull green shade and has very poor fastness this chlorophyll is having very dull green shade and poor fastness so this chlorophyll is not generally used in our in today's days as a natural dye it's also chlorophyll is also used as a food color chlorophyll dye is also used as food color because it's non toxic in nature now you can see there are two types of chlorophyll chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b generally these two chlorophylls are differ by only this methyl group and this aldehyde group in chlorophyll a there is a methyl group while in chlorophyll b there is a aldehyde group so this is what main basic difference between chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b so these are what about natural dyes so we have seen nine natural dyes first we have seen indigo then tyrian purple then uh, madder dye cochineal dye curcumin henna again we have seen saffron and lastly we have seen logwood and this chlorophyll so there are nine natural dyes okay we will stop here